that an elusive philosopher's stone contained the secret recipe to turning common metal into precious gold, and many alchemists spent years of their lives searching for it. Gold has been a very precious metal right from the beginning in the old days. The study of uh, creating of gold starts from the old days when we don't know what's going on. And we start to put everything into the pot and hopefully gold can appear. Then came the scientific revolution in the 19th century. Modern day alchemists realized that gold creation was a form of scientific technology, not mythology. Fast forward to Singapore, a cosmopolitan and highly developed nation. The country aims to increase its research spending to 5 billion US dollars per annum by 2010. A strategy that has seen it transforming itself from a financial hub into an emerging leader in the cutting edge R&D industry. Better known as a technologically advanced country, few would associate this tiny island nation with innovations in luxury items such as jewellery. However, Singapore was the first country in the world to create 19 karat purple gold. Composed of 80% pure gold and 20% aluminium and other metals, it became a major hit when first launched in 2003. Purple gold is now creating waves across Singapore, South Korea, Russia, the Middle East and the UK. This crown jewel is now sold commercially as a novelty, attracting the world of socialites and dignitaries. At a recent jewellery fashion show, Keen Ong, the assistant director of branding with a leading jeweller in town, got busy putting on a jewellery show that showcased the latest, newest range of jewellery, among them the exclusive purple gold. Tonight's event, you see a very much a high society event. Uh, you see a lot of uh, the who's who in, in, in Singapore and around the region coming together and we thought that it is a, actually a very good opportunity for us to showcase Purple Gold. We have actually Hollywood uh, celebrities that visited places in the Middle East and they uh, patronised some of these jewellers that carry Purple Gold. When Elton John had a, a concert in Dubai and he actually ended up buying a piece for himself. Retailing at a price higher than conventional gold due to its highly complex production process, Purple Gold now makes up to 30% of worldwide sales for the Singapore jeweller. The product is a bestseller in Dubai, which makes up 30% of international sales. Ko Li Hui, the executive director with Aspiel Corporation Limited, is the driving force behind Purple Gold's successful commercialization. As the head of the jeweler's R&D team, she's the person responsible for bringing Purple Gold to the international platform. I think purple is the colour for many as a royal colour. I read that in Egypt 3,000 years back in the tombs, they decorated it with shades of gold uh, from red to purple. In other countries, for example in United States, in, other, in Japan as well, there is purple gold. The fact is that they are not able to commercialise it as we are able to. In the mysterious world of metallurgy, it's well known that when aluminium is mixed with gold, the colour purple is achieved. However, though alloying additions generally increase strength and hardness, aluminium reduces the chemical compound's ductility, making it impossible to be shaped into jewellery and this has resulted in a worldwide failure to produce commercially successful purple gold jewellery. When gold and aluminium are alloyed into a certain fixed ratio, they form a gold intermetallic compound with the chemical formula AuAl2. That is one atom of gold to two atoms of aluminium. This compound has an attractive purple colour. When gold is on its own, it gives a bright yellow colour. But when you start to mix another material, such as aluminium, you actually see a purple gold colour. It's actually a matter of uh, manipulating, in fact, now the, the, the material structure. At the end of the day, give you the colour you desire. All intermetallic compounds tend to be very brittle. They cannot be easily worked by conventional metal working processes. If one attempted to roll or hammer a piece of purple gold, it would shatter into pieces. Natural metals such as gold come with their own stable and perfect atomic formation.
When additional metals like aluminium are forced into this formation, the conflicts between the atoms cause the new intermetallic compounds to become extremely brittle. The other challenge is achieving an untarnished form as purple gold is known to be easily tarnished. Throughout the centuries, where others have failed, one scientist in Singapore has made history. He successfully created the world's first malleable purple gold, revolutionising the world of jewellery. Coming up, meet the man behind Purple Gold, who shows us the daunting journey before his success, a combination of 20 years of dreams, intensive labour and the vision of one lonely scientist. Singapore Polytechnic, a leading institute of technology in Singapore. 65-year-old Mr. Lo Peng Chum has been creating jewellery marbles in the modest lab here for the last 25 years. A famous metallurgist who's done numerous consultation projects for major shipyards, he's best known as the scientist who created the world's first purple gold. Mr. Lo's lifelong affair with metallurgy started in the 70s. While working as a welding expert in major shipyards around the world, he saw the infinite potential and possible applications embedded in the metals. Mr. Lowe started brewing the idea of creating purple gold in 1976, when his lecturer at the University of Wisconsin challenged him to find a way to stabilise purple gold, an aluminium gold material known to be very brittle. However, it was only in 1998 when he finally devoted all his focus on getting it right. His vision was to create purple gold strong enough to be shaped into any form of jewellery. This would be a breakthrough in the global metallurgy world as nobody before him had succeeded in doing so. This phase diagram tells you that it's an intermetallic compound. It's a compound. And not only that, this compound is so-called ionic compound. Any ionic compounds is known by any metallurgist as to be very brittle and very hard. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Mr. Lowe couldn't find anyone who could create a commercially viable purple gold. After I return, as I travel along, I look around, whether in a jewellery shop or whatever, you know, where there's any purple gold. But surprisingly, you know, I found nothing. He became determined to find out if he could create this mysterious gold aluminium and reduce its porosity so that it could be turned into malleable jewellery pieces. To make gold purple, Mr. Lowe had to mix aluminium and gold. He learned that the compound is the hardest with a mix of 78.5% gold and 22.5% aluminium. But getting the right mix to a malleable purple gold proved to be highly complex. Each combination creates a different outcome in the alloy. Mr. Lowe poured over many textbooks in order to achieve the perfect formula. The creation of purple gold was fraught with difficulties. Besides creating the perfect mix, Professor Lowe next had to perfect the firing process in order to achieve the purple colour. He started experimenting with simple firing techniques, using a blowtorch to melt the gold aluminium alloy. But this method didn't give him the purple colour he sought. Mr. Lowe was forced to change his strategy. Different temperatures produce different results. The intermetallic compound turns into different colours depending on the heat. Mr. Lowe needed a furnace that could melt the gold alloy and provide the right heat to create the desired colour. In 1998, Mr. Lowe and his students made their own furnace. This first-generation furnace could be fired up to 5,000 degrees Celsius, the right heat for combining the two metals seamlessly and creating the colour purple. Even with the right firing process and equipment, Mr. Lowe still had to reduce the porosity and improve the toughness of the metal. I was thinking it was quite happy. It did form some bubble gold, but then, as I said, the same thing happens. It's very pretty, it's very porous. Retracing his steps, Mr. Lowe had to find the perfect purple-gold mix that could be shaped into jewellery pieces. 
he decided to mix other metals into the gold aluminium alloy to improve its toughness. First, he tried silicon. Then he used cobalt, a hard metal that is used in the preparation of magnetic, wear-resistant, high-strength alloys. Manganese, another metal that would harden purple gold, was also used. None of his experiments worked. And then one metal came to his mind, palladium, which has a tarnish and heat-resistant property. To achieve the perfect mix, Mr. Lowe spent 